Welcome back to Gold Seek TV. I'm here with Lon Schaefer, the president of Silver Corp. Lon, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Peter. Great to be here. Uh, we spoke some months ago, and a lot of news has happened with Silver Corp. So I'd like to use this opportunity to get updated to the latest uh, developments at Silver Corp, including your earnings release last week for, for the last quarter. Uh, a big, big growth uh, development for the company with the acquisitions of Orcorp and other exciting uh, things with your silver assets in, in China. So let's uh, maybe we could start off and uh, kick off with this exciting acquisition uh, with Orcorp. What is the asset that you're looking at and what makes this such an interesting target for Silver Corp? Well, the, the asset is the Nainzaga Gold Project, which is in the Lake Victoria district in Tanzania. Uh, so it's a great district to be in. Um, there's a number of other uh, projects and obviously some big uh, mines running there. Uh, good log logistics, good geology. Uh, it's been advanced by an ASX company called Orcorp. And in August, we announced the acquisition of uh, Orcorp. So that deal has been is, uh, in progress, progressing uh, here down to the, uh, the finish line. But what we liked about the project was its size and scale and the fact that it's actionable and that there's uh, a, an environmental certificate. It's basically uh, ready to go in terms of starting to build uh, a mine that when it's built will have a pretty meaningful uh, impact, not just on production because ounces are nice, but it's, you know, revenues and cash flows are, are what we uh, focus on as a company. So the, the company Orcorp put out a, free, uh, a feasibility, definitive feasibility study on this project about just over a year ago. So can you kind of break down what this uh, mine will look like once you bring it into production? Yeah, um, it's a, a combination um, open pit and underground uh, operation that they had laid out in the, the feasibility study and uh, producing over uh, approximately 11 year life, about 2.5 million ounces at an all stating cost of uh, you know just under a thousand US an ounce. Um, uh, CapEx that uh, they published in the feasibility was uh, 474 and uh, at 1750 gold, it still got you an NPV in excess of 618. Yeah, we think uh, obviously we've got higher gold prices now, uh, but also on top of that, we think there's some optimizations that we can bring to the uh, development uh, production profile, but you know, averaged over that 11 year life at uh, 234,000 ounces of gold. So this is a significant asset. It is with, with low production costs, way below the industry average, which seems to be creeping higher and higher to 1350, 1400 plus. Um, so this, this is a very nice gold asset. You mentioned environment, other permits kind of in place. So what kind of potential uh, timeline are you looking at? Uh, so in this acquisition, to be clear, is still in the process of closing, correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the shareholder meeting for Orcorp shareholders has been scheduled for December 8th. And then, um, uh, you know, fall court hearing they have to do in Australia. Uh, and then we would close the deal just before Christmas. Uh, and from a scheduling standpoint, if you know, once you say go, uh, rough estimates, it's about a two year build to get the, uh, the project into production. Uh, one notable item is that there's a resettlement action plan uh, that has been put forth to um, uh, to move the, uh, the, the villagers and the, the community that's on top of the site uh, to new locations and compensate them for the move. That's already begun. So that was kind of one of the items in the, uh, the project development timeline that has actually started already. Okay. So th this is a very prolific gold mining area. Millions and millions of ounces of gold have already pr been produced in this, I, I believe it's called the Lake Victoria Goldfields region. So if you gave us a little more detail about the activity going on around in, in this vicinity and uh, a little bit more about you know, the project, is, is, are there other opportunities to continue to develop? Uh, obviously, you have a large amount of ounces, but is there other upside to exploration-wise? Yeah, so so within the uh, the property permits and some other uh, prospecting permits that Orcorp has, there's some additional potential to look at. I mean, right now, you know, our, our plate's pretty full with building what's already a pretty big mine, and it's a kind of mine that will you know rival in terms of uh, significance uh, some of the bigger ones that are in the area. Angle Gold's uh, uh, Gata mine is not far. Uh, Barrick has two mines in in the area, uh, North Mara and Bullion Hulu. Um, and there's a number of other you know, projects and operations uh, that are surrounding the, uh, the district. So, so we do view this as a, uh, a key um, uh, uh, 
landing spot, jump off spot here into the district to build a big project, but then be positioned uh, as a with a beachhead to uh, look around at what some other growth opportunities could be. Mm -hmm. So very active with other large uh, majors uh, in the area of mining. Uh, yeah, and, and the, the important thing for that uh, really speaks back to the buildability of the project, uh, the infrastructure, uh, availability of contractors, consultants, groups, uh, power, water, all of this is uh, pretty straightforward. And also uh, Tanzania is a good country, good safety, security. Uh, so you're not you're not dealing with some of the other uh, the issues that you're dealing with in other countries. Sure. I've, I've visited the country before and uh, it's it's a fantastic place uh, to visit. I felt extremely safe and a lot of opportunities, ex an exciting time for the country. Uh, the the, the uh, Or Corp Corporation, so they had this nice asset. What was it that they saw with this interest from, from your side? Why did they want to combine with Silver Corp Metals? What is it that you bring to the table for them? Well, as, as we've talked about, Previously, these are tough markets for explorers and developers, and mm -hmm. so they've uh, they've shepherded this project through the feasibility study, and uh, you know began looking at project financing options, uh, but ultimately to have the money in the bank to be able to uh, make the down payment or have the equity component for a project financing package was going to be tough for them in these markets, and so they view this uh, deal that uh, we struck. Uh, both cash and share component as a way for shareholders to continue to participate uh, through the shares that they're getting in the uh, the growth and uh, re-rating of, of the, the value of this project, but within SilverCorp. So now the, the Orcorp shareholders will come in as uh, shareholders of SilverCorp. They now have exposure to silver and watching this project move forward. Correct. Development. Yeah. Silver Corp has had quite a large cash position. And when we spoke before, you have been very active. You know, you're saying you're very active at looking for certain opportunities. Um, you're very selective. Uh, obviously, you're not running, rushing out to just spend money just to pick something up. So this asset really must have checked off those uh, check boxes that you, you were looking for. So what, what exactly yeah. did it, the criteria that this asset met? Uh, well, I think um, I think there's three major components that um, that are important you know, to get a deal done. One, you need to like the asset, and so technically, when we looked at and did the due diligence on, on the asset, from you know geology through to mining and processing, and uh, um, uh, you know all the environmental and infrastructure aspects of it, uh, just check those boxes. Um, the other element, and I touched on it before, is just uh, given the fact that it's got that permit in place. You're not buying a project and then stepping into something that looks great. Then you're like, well, I don't know how long it's going to be till I can do this or that. And mm -hmm. uh, and the timelines in some of these projects and some of these other jurisdictions drags. And that really chews into your rate of return. So like the project technically, feel it's actionable and that there's a path forward at the community and at the government level. And then lastly is, um, do you have a party on the other side with... Uh, uh, similar expectations on what a deal should look like. And if you don't have all of those three boxes checked, then we're not really looking at something that gets us that excited. Will the company maintain an exposure in Australia post-listing or? Uh... Well, what we've, uh, what we've committed as part of the process um, is to apply for an ASX listing. Uh, it's not conditional on the deal, but we've committed to okay. apply for one to uh, facilitate ongoing you know, ownership uh, by Australian shareholders, as well as as get exposure uh, to the Australian market that doesn't have, uh, how would I say, you know, companies of our size with silver exposure. So we think of that as an opportunity as well. So we're in the midst of, uh, of uh, working through that application process right now. Okay, that's very nice. So outside of this acquisition, you came out with earnings last week. It looked quite positive. You have very strong uh, your cash flow generation. Uh, earnings look good. So uh, if you could kind of break down how the quarter looks like and uh, what what to look for forward to in the coming quarters. Yeah, and I would say from a production numbers that that was probably a, a bit of a tougher quarter in terms of uh, production levels and particularly GC. Uh, we had a, a temporary um, um, a shutdown in production uh, for five weeks during the quarter. So that definitely affected GC in terms of the output and the economics. 
Uh, but, um, you know, the rest of the assets, Yang mainly, uh, you know, continue to move ahead strongly, good cost control. And uh, uh, going forward, GC is now back up, you know, running fully, Ying's progressing. I guess the other interesting development that, that we had in the quarter was yeah, Ying has begun um, to uh, produce, uh, ship and sell Dore, uh, which is an evolution of an idea uh, at Yang that began uh, a few years back with a, a chance discovery of some different types of mineralization. And what we've effectively done is, is a bit of a, a side hustle here where we've built a, a gold mine uh, within uh, our silver mine while continuing to produce silver and making money and generating the earnings and cash flow that everybody expects from uh, Silver Corp. Fantastic. So now you're seeing the benefit of, of that investment. Uh, you, you continue to do a lot of exploration work. I, I don't re remember the exact numbers, but it was an incredible amount of drilling, 125,000 for this year, was it? If, if I uh, More than that, yeah, more more into the uh, into the 200s in terms of thousands of meters at Yang alone. Uh, you know, we drilled a million meters in, in three calendar years starting in 2020. And uh, that uh, amplified program was really kicked off because of that chance discovery. But then as we went back looking through the records and, and uh, examining the database, even for the silver mineralization, uh, we unearthed a whole bunch of uh, new opportunities to find uh, more material. And, and what we're really looking for is uh, more material that's higher grade, nearer surface, uh, easier to access so that we can get that production to the plant at lower cost and, um, and generate the metals and the money. Now, you know, with uh, with uh, effective cost management. So so production continues. You're, you're, you're looking to continue production profile growth in China with uh, with uh, not just through drilling, but you're expanding um, with with this process. So what sort of levels, what kind of targets are we looking at from maybe a silver equivalent um, basis in the coming year or two? Yeah, our, our previous targets, and we're going to have to update those. And we're um, we're looking to get a new forty three one hundred one on Yang out, uh, you know, the first half of next year, to uh, tie in a bunch of this drilling that we've we've talked about. But then also uh, a bit of a shift in thinking that's that's taking place at Yang, and uh, we're looking at uh, shifting to more mechanization uh, at Yang. And this is to you know tackle the fact that. You know, inflationary pressures and the availability of workers means that uh, we need to look at more automation and more mechanization in the, the mining method. So um, that's going to mean opening up newer areas, uh, increasing throughput, um, shifting the mining methods, uh, adding or sorting as a ways to um, uh, eliminate some of the waste and uh, upgrade the ore before it goes to the mill. We're looking at a mill capacity expansion. And, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the meantime, one, one thing that we're focused on right now is uh, building our third tailing stand, um, hmm. which is uh, needed for the production increase, but also for the, the future life. And that's, uh, that's commenced partway through. We just visited it uh, in October when we took analysts there. Fantastic. So, so, so what is the uh, target for production uh, growth there? Yeah, so so the old target, and and we'll have to revisit this with this forty three one hundred one was oh, growing to about an eight million ounces of uh, of silver. It didn't oh. really factor in uh, what we can see as growing gold production here. It's a bit early to give targets on that, but we're optimistic that you know gold will start to have a meaningful impact on uh, the, the earnings and cash flow at Yang. Okay, so I mean, Silver Corp has always been known as a primary silver producer, so now. You're you're bringing more of a gold component, and now with this acquisition, even greater gold exposure. So, what is the strategy and thinking of, of expanding into uh, to gold? Well, I think it's it's where the opportunities lie, and so we're open minded on commodities. We haven't been that excited about uh, chasing some of the exotics in terms of some of the metals that everyone's uh, been interested in the markets, but um, uh, obviously still very interested in silver. Uh, interested in copper, it does tie in nicely to the electri uh, electrification story around uh, silver. Uh, but obviously, you know, gold uh, gold has persisted, and there's lots of gold projects out there, so lots to look at. And um, and obviously, we have our, our own gold deposits now that we're finding uh, in our mines in, in China. So growing mm -hmm. that gold production, and then looking at uh, bringing on Nyanzaga. And uh, still out looking and thinking what the next opportunities will be beyond that. 
So the company is still looking around. You have a, a very strong cash position. Uh, where does this stand now? Is it just under about 200 million? Yeah, as of the September quarter, we just reported it was uh, approximately 190 million. And that's after we put uh, 18 and a half into uh, Orcorp as part of a placement that we did on signing of the acquisition. And in the quarter, we also put another uh, 5 million into uh, New Pacific to participate in their uh, financing that they did. So between your cash position and the equity investments at Silver Corp, which includes New Pacific and other equities, what is the total? Uh, what does that stand out now? Huh? Uh, well, if I, if I do it backwards and look at the current market cap and strip out the cash and okay. the portfolio, yeah. uh, you're sort of paying $65 million on a look-through basis for our mines in China. <laughs> And you're not you're producing several million silver cool analysis. Okay, that's that's yeah. And and I think again, more importantly, operating cash flow of the last twelve months, uh, you know, in sort of the eighty million range. So, you know, I, I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to laugh at it, at, at it, but this this market has been very difficult. It's not just silver corp; it's the entire sector. It, there seems to be you know just incredible valuations and opportunities right now. So, uh, what and, and what is it? I think. To be fair, to, to continue on that point is when we complete the acquisition, obviously, some of that cash will go out the door in terms of acquisition. But then we'll have on our balance sheet a gold asset in Tanzania that hopefully the market will recognize that value and attribute a higher value for it in our portfolio, given that it's actionable and we can move ahead with our cash and our cash flow and our funding capacity to build that, which is, again, uh, the challenge that Orcorp as a developer had. So I, that is, that is a part of the question I didn't get to is how do you pay for the entire CapEx? So you have a large cash position. Will you be using a, a debt as another avenue to finance? Or? Yeah. Our, our, um, so the, the first point is, I, you know, I mentioned the CapEx up front. We think we can get that CapEx number down with a bit of a shift and an optimization in the development plan. Uh, we're not putting that number out just yet for competitive reasons, but we think we can get it down meaningfully. Uh, we do have cash on hand. We have cash flow. Uh, we are looking at the traditional project finance route for some or all of the the the, uh, the, the components in the uh, in the development. Uh, we're also looking at uh, different uh, vendors that might provide sort of vendor financing for their their component of the uh, of the build or the services to build it. So. So we'll definitely be using our cash balance um, to get the project going, but uh, you know we think we can augment uh, with other sources of outside uh, project financing. Do you think analysts will start to look differently at Silver Corp as you diversify um, your risks in a way by geographically diversifying? You're going to another metal, um, another mine. So is that something to look forward to from the analyst side? Uh, yeah, I think so. And I think it's getting out and, and telling the story on a company that for a lot of the market wasn't familiar with the ASX listed company and this project. Uh, but the more we get out and get in front of people to show uh, what this project is, uh, what, we're, um, what we're intending to do with it, and the value inherent in that, uh, I think we should start to see that value uh, come into at least uh, the analyst NAVs and their price targets. And hopefully the market can pick up on the progress that we make towards getting this into a, uh, a cash flowing situation, which we think will be obviously the sort of the last re-rate uh, on this asset that you would get. Yeah. So there's, there's, you're, uh, this merge will allow you to unlock more of this value of this asset. Um, and, yeah. and with the addition of your other assets, it really puts this company in, and you're really growing the company in a very significant way with this acquisition. So how does a new Silver Corp look in 2024? What sort of milestones and, and uh, things should investors be looking forward to in the coming year? Uh, well, um, as it relates to Nianzaga, we'll have closed the acquisition uh, moving forward, more clarity on the development plans and timelines and costs that we can't give right now in terms of what the asset will look like. Um, as it relates to our existing operations, we will have more clarity on uh, the, uh, the yin growth plan, this transition to more mechanization, uh, the contribution of gold from within yang. So that'll be another key uh, item. There's a few other smaller catalysts tied into to both of these in terms of 
Uh, is there district op opportunities around Nanzaga? Is there uh, district opportunities around Yang? We already have one, and uh, we think we'll have some news on that satellite project uh, coming on and adding to the to the Ying uh, contribution. Um, uh, I'd, I'd say those would be the the, the key areas, and, and there's nothing uh, sort of stopping us from identifying another target to uh, to bring into the uh, pipeline. Fantastic. Well, an exciting time for Silver Court Metals. You have uh, quite a strong valuation proposition here. Uh, so looking forward to see how the market responds post-acquisition and as the market starts to recognize the opportunities that you've created for investors. So looking forward to following up in the coming quarter uh, post-acquisition and uh, seeing how, how it progresses. That's great. We uh, uh, look forward to doing that.